And the beauty of the Nipah Pal construction, right, is that you don't need any approval from any person to connect between chains, right? So, for example, if I have, you know, Ethereum Classic and I want to transition to, for example, another proof of work chain, maybe Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin Regular, right? I can make the, the swap between the, or the transfer between the two chains without anybody being able to deny me the ability to do so. And in fact, without even anybody realizing that this happened, right? So unless you specifically tell somebody, hey, I, I transitioned to that chain at the specific time, here's a transaction where I did it, nobody would really be aware, right? And actually the, the way it looks like from a miner's point of view, when you do a NEPOPAL transaction to switch between chains, it will just be a smart contract function call. So there's some smart contract that either you deploy yourself or use one that somebody else has deployed. You call in this smart contract and you pass in some data and that data contains a NEPOPAL proof. And then that's how they know that you did something on the other chain that you can broadcast an event. And so I know this is like a super complicated uh, uh, concept that I'm trying to explain in a few minutes, so possibly it will not really make sense. Uh, but the, the real beauty, what I'm trying to say is that the real beauty of the NEPOPAL construction is that not only can you transfer your assets to a different chain without having to have anybody be the gatekeeper, right? You can do it in a trustless fashion. You can also do it without anybody even being aware that it's happened, right? You swap chains, but nobody knows you've really swapped chains unless they know where to look. And I think that's super powerful. That totally makes sense now, because like right now, you and I, we're about 12,000 miles apart and there's data packets of audio and video going between us, and they're not always taking the same path. They're, they're taking different paths through different service providers, but they still get to the other end, and they don't care what service provider they go through as long as they get to the other end. And I kind of imagine what you just described is like, if I were to try to send ADA, for just an example, ADA from my location to a bank, and let's say, uh, Ripple, Ripple connects to a bank, and Ripple because they're you know they've done that I guess, and then Ada connects to Ripple. Then my chain, my money would go across their chain to the bank, and it could come, and I would never even know. That's just and, an example, but is that roughly the idea, right? And it could probably hit. Well, I mean, sorry, go ahead, Sebastian. Yeah, I mean, so you wouldn't even have to have this bank layer, right? That's the advantage of the Nipapal chain. Or not new population, new profile construction, right? You all, all you need is to have a uh, platform, a proof of stake, or sorry, proof of work platform that supports generating new profile proofs, and then another chain that it doesn't matter if it use POW or POS or anything else, as long as it has smart contracts. Those are the two requirements, and as long as you have those two requirements, you can just switch stuff around with no middleman. You go uh, directly across and it's done in, uh, without anybody really even being aware this happened. How, how would this communicate with the legacy system? And the, you know, if, you, if so, you're able to, go ahead. Yeah, so this wouldn't communicate with the legacy system. So because it, the reason communicating with the legacy system is hard is because somebody has to prove that some asset ex exists, right? In cryptocurrencies, it's easy to prove that an asset exists because you have some sort of cryptographic proof of its existence, right? And that we use that fact for the NEPAPAL construction, the fact that you can cryptogra cryptographically prove that NASA exists, allows you to do this, this trustless transaction. However, for a legacy system, you have no proof that somebody holds USD, right? The only way you can uh, have proof that somebody holds a certain USD amount is if you get some statements by maybe a bank or a government that uh, basically validates the claim. Right, and the, so that's why you can't have these kinds of trustless bridges. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. It does. It it that's a very. I mean, I know that. You know, that's. This is something that has to be solved because the financial world is a very sketchy world. I mean, in the sense that governments do want to control and an uh, they want they do want to have some sort of metadata on customers. So. You yeah. know how this. I mean, is it's in the process of being solved, right? Because so, if you imagine right now, there's a bunch of stable coins coming out, right? Uh, that are backed by, for example, uh, large U.S. banks. 
for example, I think there's like Gemini coin or I forget their name, and then there's Circle US. I, I don't remember the names of all the the, the stable coins, but there's some ones that have some legitimate uh, bank backing it. And as soon as you have uh, some asset that is on chain that represents the US dollar that you can trust, that you can now use this for the Nipah Pal construction, right? And so if if you uh, want, you could send you know US dollars uh, indirectly through this stable coin and then create an Ipapa proof to prove that you made this transaction and then send that over to Cardano, right? So for example, if for some reason nobody wants to build a stable coin over Cardano or just takes us longer to get the step where ecosystem grows to that point, we could use this construction, Ipapa construction, to basically reuse uh, stable coin ecosystems built in other chains. So I imagine like Ethereum Classic, which is a proof of work coin or Ethereum, could be stored in a Daedalus wallet or a Yoroi wallet, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's what the Nipo Pal will solve. That's the cross chain. Yeah. So so the, the core concept of Nipo Pal is basically being able to prove a certain event happened within a chain. So as long as some event happened that you're trying to prove, then that's all you, you need. Cool. Right. So for example, if you want to have a Cardano smart contract that requires five USD to run, but there is no USD stable coin in the Cardano blockchain, you could tell your users, okay, what you need to do is go to Ethereum, uh, use one of the stable coins on Ethereum, send your stable coin to this address, generate an EFA PAL proof, and then send to the Cardano blockchain. And then through this kind of convoluted construction, it'll be as if you sent the $5 directly through the Cardano blockchain, despite the fact that we wouldn't have a stable coin. Hopefully in the future, we would have a stable coin, so all this construction would be necessary. Uh, as, as I say, uh, it's constructions that uh, iOS K has spent a lot of time researching and implementing uh, do have some real world use cases that will allow Cardano to basically scale uh, both in the scalability problem, but also uh, scale in the connection between the, the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, that probably no other blockchain is really thinking as much about.